Tending the Trasco International Air Show at the Usiaku Taku International Airport east of Wintuk on the 1st of August, one can rightfully say all expectations were exceeded, as the variety of aircraft on show catered to the expectations of the almost 15,000 people who showed up to witness the spectacular display of man made engineering. <laughs> The sun had barely risen over the airport when the first aircraft took off to showcase often death-defying skills to the spectators who came out to see the best of the best. It was the youthful and highly experienced pilot Nigel Hopkins in his MX2 aerobatic red fiberglass aircraft who kept all eyes glued on the sky with his single-engine machine. Hopkins boasts no less than 16,000 flying hours that equate to more than 660 days in the cockpit. But it is not the number of hours that make him an experienced pilot. He can also fly 123 different types of aircrafts. The idea for the air show was born in January 2014 when a group in the aviation sector decided to address the shortage of local pilots in the market by encouraging interest in the profession through the show. An open day was arranged at Eros Airport in Windhoek in May last year to put aircrafts on display, but that eventually turned into something else, an event to recruit and identify potential pilots, because a show with static aircrafts was clearly not the solution to the lack of interest. The president of the Aircraft Owners and Pilot Association, Reinhard Gettner, said. Having visited uh, an air show shortly before that event and we were looking at the aeroplanes we decided no an air show needs a proper air show aeroplanes flying you want to hear them you want to smell them you want to speak to the pilots that's an air show so we cancelled the static display and we applied from the government for, for permission to have a full full air show with aeroplanes flying which we then only got in March once that happened, we started at, in all seriousness the preparations for an air show on the 1st of August this year, 2015. With hindsight, it was already a bit uh, tricky to arrange an event of such magnitude in such a short time. But, well, clearly we managed, um, but that's where it all started. And that was exactly what this air show was all about. Spectators could hear the roar of the engines, see their favorite aircraft on the ground and smell burning fuel as the craft swept past the audience. Such a display was the first ever flyby of an Airbus from South African Airways flanked by four Harvards next to both wings. This spectacular low and slow formation had many spectators running for their cameras. With new regulations imposed on aircraft manufacturers to reduce engine noise, it was clear that back in the years, noise pollution was not high on the agenda of aircraft manufacturers as the thundering roar of the four Harvard engines dominated that of the much larger passenger aircraft. Formation flying excites people, and when the Goodyear Eagles, an aerobatics team from South Africa, with their but special single-engine biplanes took the sky, there was hardly a spectator who did not hold their breath at the daring skills on display. A clear indication that these pilots deserve to be called the world's best. Another aircraft that was a crowd puller was the P-51 Mustang single-engine single-seater aircraft. This aircraft was originally built in the United States of America as a single-seat fighter bomber aircraft. The Mustang with its silver-colored body and red nose dubbed Mustang Sally was first flown in 1940 and only retired from active military service 44 years later during 1984. 
when this aircraft with its characteristic low belly and whistling sound when dive bombing went on sale. Collectors of vintage aircrafts did not sit and wait to get their own P-51s. Another old time favorite on display was the Blackburn Buccaneer, which brought back many memories as the Buccaneer was one of the most advanced aircrafts of its time. And with wings that can fold to fit into a ship, it left many people wondering whether it was in fact a safe aircraft. The Buccaneer was originally built by Britain during the Cold War and was specially built during the 1950s as a carrier-borne attack aircraft, meaning it had the capabilities of taking off and landing on aircraft carriers at sea. The distinguished shape of its wings and unique sound of the jet engines as the pilot took the Buccaneer through the various maneuvers over Siakutaku International Airport will be remembered for many years to come. The maiden flight of the Buccaneer, which was capable of carrying a nuclear bomb, was in April 1958, but it was officially withdrawn from active service during 1994 by the Royal Air Force. Other aircrafts that made an impact on the day were the Antonov AN-2, nicknamed Anushka or Annie. This single-engine biplane flew in 1947 for the very first time and was originally built for the Russian agricultural sector. Apart from the visitors from South Africa, the Namibian police also did a simulation arrest involving all three of their helicopters, complete with highly trained officers who defused a potentially dangerous crime scenario. The Namibian Air Force also showcased their hardware with fighter and trainer jets. Getting all these aircrafts together along with thousands of visitors and spectators was not an easy task, Gartner said. Obviously safety aspects, logistics to get the people to an area we all know that is potentially dangerous, yet you pulled off everything 110%, no incidents. Yes, that is uh, probably the, most, uh, the biggest reward we have. Uh, it is the, 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 the no incident or no accident factor. We compiled a safety report. We call it the safety risk assessment report, which is a compulsory requirement. Uh, it had to be approved. It went backwards and forwards a couple of times, but finally, about three weeks ago or so, it was finally approved. Um, the insurance, uh, what happens if, and what happens about the unknown factor, that we had to take care of. Now, bear in mind, nobody of us is by anyhow, uh, by any means qualified or experienced in an air show. And uh, we all learned by experience. Yes, and there are many, many factors to consider, which we had to consider uh, behind the scenes. Not that obvious to the visitor, uh, which had to be in place. It is logistically probably the biggest event in the history of Namibia. Uh, if I start counting and ex uh, explaining in detail the organizational efforts and challenges behind this air show, uh, I, I don't think time will be permit per permitting. It was just huge. The sounds of the Bell Lewis rotors, driven by a single turboshaft engine, will always be etched in the minds of chopper enthusiasts. But that was, to the surprise of many, not the end. Driving back to Vintuk with the sun already behind the western horizon, spectators were greeted by the roaring sound of the four low-flying Harbour T6s, completely as if to assure the crowd that Namibian aviators and spectators will soon welcome them back to the land of the brave.